ended up getting a 505. Uh, and as you can tell by the look on my face, that is not what I wanted. Hey everybody, my name is Julian and welcome to my new YouTube channel, Julian to the MD. So as you can see in the title of the video, today I'm going to be telling y'all a little bit about my journey of getting into medical school. Uh, and that is five different medical schools with a low MCAT score. So if that's something you're interested in, then stay tuned for the rest of the video. All right, so where do I even start? Y'all, it's been a really long process of, you know, studying for the MCAT, just going through college in general going through the application process for medical school and all of that, and then actually getting in and then taking care of all of those responsibilities in terms of, you know, checking things off the list to actually be able to start school in August, which is still mind blowing to me. Um, and so before I go any further, um, I just want to ask if you all could please subscribe to my page if you know, you're know you interested in seeing my journey through medical school in my first year and, 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 and so on. And also, you know, just hearing more advice from me and, you know, just learn from me um things that i did wrong things that i wish i can go back and change things that i'm doing right uh and yeah if you're interested in that then please subscribe down below and then like this video but yeah i i would say the studying for the mcat was probably one of the hardest things i've ever done in my life if not the hardest um, and if you're going through that process right now, please have have hope and have faith in yourself. You can do it and you will get through. Plenty of people have done it before you and plenty of people will continue to do it after you. And so just believe in yourself. It's not impossible, I promise you. And even if you don't get the score that you want um, or that you feel like you need to get into good medical schools, you definitely still can. And I am a testament to that because... Uh, I'll share my score. I may share my score a little bit later. Uh, I'm still iffy about actually telling people my score because I, I really haven't told many people because I'm not, it's not something that I'm, I'm very proud of, but you know, I did get into medical school, which I think says a lot. And so uh, if you're in my, if you're in that same situation, then, you know, definitely stay tuned and, you know, watch the rest of the video. But, uh, you know, I started studying for the MCAT probably, uh, I think it was winter break before that semester where I would start on my application and then apply during the summer. And so that was, I guess, the um, winter of my junior year. Um, and so I studied at home for that part. Didn't really get that that much done just because I was at home. I wasn't in like the school mindset. And so then I ended up studying during the school year. And that was probably not that good of a decision, but it was... I guess the only choice I had at that moment because I didn't I didn't end up studying that summer before, which many people do, which is a great option, I think. Um, and so, yeah, I was studying eight to like 11 p.m. most nights drinking bangs. Uh, if, you, if you know what bangs are, please don't drink those. It's a caffeinated uh, beverage you should not drink because it has too much caffeine in it, especially not at eight o'clock at night like I was doing most nights. And so, yeah, studying for the MCAT didn't go that well for me. Um, I also made the mistake of like not going through all of the books in their entirety because I kind of got tired of reading the pages out the book. I didn't feel like it was helping me, but that was a downfall of mine, which I don't think you should make. Please read through all of the book pages. I use Kaplan personally. And so, yeah, go through the books. Don't don't think now if if you do have all that knowledge and you know you don't need to go through the books, then you know that's a choice that you a choice that you can make on your own. But um I wouldn't recommend that for somebody who didn't know everything out of the books, but just got tired of you know reading through all the books. Um, and so yeah, so definitely definitely do that. Uh, that was one of my mistakes, and you know I would go back and change it if I could. Can't change it, but you know, uh, yeah. And then, you know, fast forwarding to, you know, when test date was arriving, very, very, very swiftly, <laughs> um, I started to take practice tests every Saturday, I believe, and sometimes Sundays. And so my score was not going up much at all after, you know, it, it, it did go up after I studied um, from the, the pre-test. Um, but in terms of like while I was studying and, you know, when the test day was approaching, my score was not really going up. It maybe went up one or two points, uh, but it was nowhere near the score that I felt like I needed to get into medical school. And so I began to panic. Uh, didn't end up changing my test date because, you know, I said that, you know, I'm just going to go in there with confidence and whatever happens, you know, 
I still would be proud of it because I put in that initial work to, you know, at least try to get the score that I wanted and to put forth, put forth effort to get into medical school. And so um, ended up getting a 505. Uh, and as you can tell by the look on my face, that is not what I wanted. That is not the score that I wanted. I don't think that that's the score that most pre-med students want to get into medical school, being that the highest score is, is up in the 520s. Um, and so I didn't really panic after that. I kind of just gave up for probably a month. Uh, at, the, at that point, I had said that I wasn't applying to medical school and that I was going to take a gap year. And that was not something that I ever imagined for myself. That is not something that I wanted to do. Mind you, gap years are a great option for many people. I personally wanted to go straight through, uh, which I am now, thank God. Um, and, you know, I kind of I have an interesting story as to, you know, when I actually decided to just go ahead and apply. Very random, but um, I was out partying with some of my friends during the summer when I was in the summer program. Uh, and then one night when we got back, I, I uh, went to bed and I laid in my bed. I didn't go to sleep actually, but I was just laying in bed. And then all of a sudden, it just came to me. And I was like, you know what? I gave myself an internal pep talk. I was just like, you know what? Go ahead and apply because all they can do is say no, you know? And I did, and it worked out. <laughs> So um, that, you know, that that was a, a life changing moment for me. You know, I, I ended up applying, you know, kind of late in the cycle. It wasn't too late, probably a month after the applications um, actually opened, which I would have applied right when they opened, uh, sent in my primaries right when they opened um, if, you know, I had a better MCAT score. But like I said, you know, I kind of like I, I, it, it knocked me down. Honestly, it, it really did it knocked me down. And, you know, I wasn't really confident and. Uh, so I ended up, you know, not applying at first, but then, you know, I ended up applying with my 505 and got in. And so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what factors I think played maybe the biggest role. You know, of course, we never know what admissions committees are looking for. You know, you, you might get into the number one medical school and then get rejected by, you know, the number 50, 60 or unranked schools even. So, you know, you never really know. Each school is looking for, looking for something different. And I think that that is where the application um, and, you know, your extracurriculars, your essays come into play. And essay specifically is something that I'm gonna be talking about. So I know as pre-med students, we always hear, oh my God, grades and test scores aren't everything. And that's easy to say for someone who has already gone through the process 10, 15, 20 years ago and is a, is a practicing physician or someone who, you know, isn't necessarily in the field, but is like mentoring you in some way, a guidance counselor or something like that. And so that's a pretty easy thing to say for somebody who is actually going through the process. But, you know, for those of us who are going through the process, that doesn't really help us out that much because... <laughs> Uh, there's always this constant pressure to have the highest GPA and the highest MCAT score, you know, that that's no secret. And so that didn't really help me uh, until until I actually started getting secondaries and getting interviews. And I was like, wait, maybe there is some truth in that. And I guess there is, because like I told you, I got a 505 MCAT score. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things in my application that I think really stood out. Um, I think extracurriculars, you know, I've, I've heard from uh, admissions counselors that they like to see you be committed to something, show commitment in some way. And so, you know, starting off in college, maybe doing some extracurriculars freshman year and continuing to do those senior year, uh, even even those that aren't related necessarily to necessarily related to the field of medicine. Um, and so, you know, I volunteered a, a decent bit during college and, you know, I was a part of different organizations uh, like the like Oliver Hill Scholars. It's basically an organization focused on social justice and um, community service. And so I was a part of that for four years and, you know, a few other activities. But, you know, the extracurriculars really give you a chance to stand out outside of your test scores because everyone has a GPA, everyone has an MCAT score. And while that's important, you know, it doesn't necessarily distinguish who you are as a person. Um, it really only shows your academic proficiencies and so um, schools like to see who you are as a person because I mean as a physician 
you're not going to be sitting taking tests every day. You're going to be interacting with patients, interacting with other uh, healthcare professionals, and so they want to see like who you are as a person and you know how you interact with different people, what interests you, and all of that. Um, and then also essays, I think, are a great way to showcase who you really are. Uh, you know, there are some schools that don't send secondaries automatically, and you have to kind of research those. Being that I applied very sporadically, I didn't really research a lot of things that I really should have. Thank God it worked out for me, but if I could go back, I would definitely research what schools send out secondaries automatically and which schools send out secondaries after a primary um, screening process. And so uh, most of the schools that I applied to, thank God, did, did send secondaries um, automatically. And so, you know, I had the chance to kind of show them who I was outside of, you know, my academic life. And so... Um, I think essays are a great way to do that. You know, sometimes you have to be very vulnerable, you know, tell them who you really are, you know, so that they can, you know, kind of add context sometimes even to, you know, your grades and your MCAT scores and, you know, how, you know, the context of your life and, you know, outside activities, family issues and all of that kind of played a role and, you know, how your grades and how your grades played out trends and, and different things like that. And so, um, you know, you get to share things like, oh, where do you see yourself in 10 years? That was one of the questions that I liked. I talked about how, you know, I mentor now. And so I would love to mentor in the future. And, and so that kind of showed them who I am as a person. I, I value other people, which is very important in the field of medicine, if you get where I'm going. And uh, so, yeah, I think that, you know, essays allow me to, you know, have a second chance in the process, you know, because many schools probably were not very excited about my 505 MCAT score just as I wasn't. <laughs> because, you know, academic proficiency is important in the field of medicine. That's no secret. And so um, it, it, it kind of got to, you know, add context, like, like I said, to, you know, why my score was like that, things I was going through um, during college even. Um, and so, yeah. Just, you know, have some confidence in the process, even if you don't get the right score. And, you know, if you do want to retake the MCAT, then, you know, definitely do that if you aren't, you know, too happy with your score. I know that money is a factor. It was a factor for me. You know, some people can't really afford to, you know, take a chance and pay all of that money when they don't have a good MCAT score. I took a big, a big leap of faith because I spent a lot of money. I spent at least three thousand dollars on primaries and secondaries and, and thank god interviews were uh, virtual and that was another reason why i ended up applying but yeah just you know have some confidence in yourself you know you you definitely can get into medical school without you know having the best academics you know it's important but you know we always have room to grow and the and the schools can can see that so um just show them who you are show them that you really care about the field of medicine show them that you know you care about other people show them that you are willing to go the distance because the field of medicine i mean i'm not in it yet <laughs> but uh it's, it, it's it's hard and it's hard to get to become a uh, attending physician and so you know show them that you're you're dedicated to the process you know show them and with all of that said you know i really do appreciate you all tuning into this video um i'm definitely gonna take y'all along with me on my journey through medical school i have my white coat ceremony in less than a month which is crazy i start school on august 1st um, and i'll share a little bit about what school i chose in my next video um yeah i'm 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 terrified i'm not gonna lie i'm very i'm very terrified of what I'm getting myself into, but, you know, I'm really excited to, you know, just be finally at the point where I'm doing things that directly correlate with my career of choice. You know, college was cool, college was fun, uh, but, you know, you, you do a lot of, like, sociology, math, physics, I don't know, music classes, art classes, but now I'm going to be doing medicine and medicine and more medicine. And so I'm, I'm really excited. And, you know, if you want to see my journey, please subscribe down below. Please leave a like on the video and then leave a comment down below with just video suggestions. You know what? Whatever y'all want to see and whatever I can provide, I will. And so thank y'all for tuning into my video. Julian to the MD. And I will see y'all later. <laughs>